Hey, it's Lucy. I'm well qualified to make this video because I'm kind of a technophobe. Um, I tend to resist technological change and I tend to deny that there are programs out there that can make my life easier. So stuff has to be really good before I start acknowledging that it exists. Over your many years in a PhD, you are going to need some kind of organized system to help you keep track of all that stuff stuffed in your head. And there is an overwhelming abundance of apps that will claim to do this. So from a student who is only going to tolerate apps if they really do change my life for the better and absolutely nothing less. Here are five apps that I think are essential for every PhD student. First one is Evernote. Evernote is a free app for you to jot down anything and everything in a organized, searchable, logical format. You can make notebooks to hold individual related notes. For example, I have this channel, I have um, hiking, lab work. You can scan things in with the free Evernote app. You can add tags to find things easier. You can annotate images. You can make checklists. You can even add other users to certain notebooks and then share things back and forth much like you would on Google Drive. An alternative is OneNote, but I know nothing about that because it comes with Microsoft's OneDrive. Um, it looks pretty much the same though. The reason this software is so inescapably useful to me is because it goes about saying by the end of your three or four year long PhD, you're going to have forgotten a lot of what you knew at the start. Physical notebooks are great for when you just need something quick to hand, but what happens when you've got ten of them and you know there's an inconceivably important reference in one of them? Or what happens when you can't interpret your handwriting anymore? Or, or if you lose one? For all these reasons, Evernote is the number one piece of software I'd recommend to any PhD student. And that's whether you're Mac or Windows, science or arts, organized and efficient, or extremely slack like me. Number two is a reference manager. High on my list of things not to do as an academic is to do what I did when writing up my master's dissertation. And that is to spend an entire day by hand, copying references from Google Scholar into Microsoft Word, like an animal. How a reference manager works is, I kind of think of it as iTunes, but for papers. So it manages your citations, the metadata, the PDFs, the papers, and most of them come with a web plugin that you can use to download papers directly from the likes of Science Direct. You can then search for papers just like you'd search for a song in iTunes. But the best bit is, when it comes to writing up your own papers, there's a plugin for your word processor. You just type in the reference you want, and it imports it. But the best, the best, the best bit is it writes your bibliography for you. I chose to use one called Zotero over competitors like Mendeley and EndNote because it seemed intuitive to me, it was free, and they're all pretty similar, I'm honest, though you do have to pay for EndNote. It's worth mentioning if you do get something like EndNote on an institution's license and then move somewhere that doesn't have that license, you'll either have to pay for it or you'll have to start from scratch, and that didn't seem worth the risk to me. Everybody swears by a different one, so you could always just try out several before committing. So to save yourself time and dignity, don't do what 22-year-old Lucy did, Get yourself a reference manager. Number three on my list is some kind of vector imaging processor, even if, like me, you're not remotely artistically inclined or talented. By this, I mean somewhere where you can draw lines and shapes that are PDFs, so you can zoom in and zoom in and zoom in forever and they won't go pixelated, in contrast to bitmaps, which are JPEGs, for example. You zoom in on them and they go all pixelated. At some point, whether you are presenting a paper or a presentation or just fencing off a door because there are nesting wrens, you're going to need to make simple, uncluttered graphics that will get your message across. Adobe Illustrator is super powerful and effective, but has a very steep learning curve. And again, not all institutions pay for its hefty subscription fee, so if you have an institution that does and then you move, you won't be able to access your files. To me, Illustrator is a bit like buying a mansion and just living in one room. Uh, I don't feel like I will ever use to its maximum the, the capabilities and power that the software has. And I was a bit lost and overwhelmed when I used it in my masters. Free simpler alternatives include the likes of Inkscape. But to be honest, when you export PDFs from Microsoft PowerPoint and Mac OS's Keynote, they're shockingly good. I'm just going to show you again that Illustrator figure I made for my masters. This took me an entire day learning how to make everything work and that getting everything drawn. Here is that same figure redrawn in Keynote in about half the time. Oh, and better still, when I came to give a presentation on this, I just added custom animation and whoa! It's just really powerful, really intuitive, really easy straight off the bat. But if it's PowerPoint or Illustrator that float your boat, go for it. Just get a vector processor and use it well. The fourth piece of software I recommend is a calendar of some sort, whether this is Microsoft Outlook, the Gmail one, the iCloud one, or the Mac Calendar app. As a PhD student, you are going to have conferences to attend, and seminars to attend, and debates to attend, outreach activities to do, and demonstrating activities. You're going to be meeting with your supervisor, you're going to be doing experiments, you're going to be going to conferences, you're going to be getting on trains, you're going to be getting on planes, you're going to have appointments that are going to be months in advance that are going to change at the last minute. <gasps> You're going to need to keep track of it all, and you don't have a personal assistant, so this is how. The key to using a calendar is to use it religiously. As soon as you make an appointment, put it in. As soon as a plan changes, update it. 
If something is really important or really far in future, consider setting an alarm. I check calendar several times every day. I could have a physical diary, but this is just neater. It's easy to remind me of stuff. I can invite people to do certain things. I can edit it easily. I can easily check when I last did something by searching for it. Also, calendars will sync across mobile devices, which is very useful when you're on the go. For all these reasons, I strongly recommend you get a calendar app, but don't bother if you've got a personal assistant. My last recommendation will seem staggeringly obvious, but here goes. It's Microsoft Word. I do not like Word. I don't find it intuitive, it's clunky, it's slow, it crashes on you, you move one small image and the entire document just crumbles before your eyes. But everybody has it. You use pages like I do and it's kind of common courtesy to convert it to Word in case they don't have a Mac. You use LaTeX and you need specialist knowledge to use it, so sadly, as much as it pains me to say, Word is the international language of word processors. One thing I do prefer in Word over Pages is that its track changes function is really neat. When you're passing an abstract back and forth with your supervisor, this is a way to see what changes and comments they've made line by line, everything from adding a semicolon to rewriting a whole paragraph in a comment. That's the only compliment it's getting from me though, and at least you won't have to pay for it, because pretty much every institution has a license. Those are my top five apps for PhD students. Please tell me if you think I've missed any, tell me what apps you think have changed your life that I won't have heard of, and come chat to me in the comments, find me on Twitter, and please subscribe for more PhD related content. I'm Lucy Kizik, this is The PH Diaries, and thank you for watching.